Hello, and welcome to episode five of Anti-Doping Updates. We got three big stories to talk about today. The first is the Court for Arbitration of Sport decision in the case of Rusada versus WADA. Second is the decision from the International Testing Agency to retest samples from the Sochi 2014 Olympics. And third is the case of the rugby player, Adam Carr, um, who is sanctioned for a doping violation. Let's get started. So the first story is the biggest story, and that is Rusada versus WADA. Rus Rusada is the Russian anti-doping agency, and WADA is the world anti-doping agency. So to understand the story here, we need to go back to the 2014 Olympics. The 2014 Winter Olympics were hosted by Russia in Sochi, and at that, um, Olymp after the Olympics, uh, a whistleblower who is the head of the WADA lab in Moscow uh, alerted a German documentary which produced this documentary film um, exposing the doping, the state sponsored doping program that Russia, the Russian Ministry for Sport, had developed for the Sochi Olympics. And this was a vast, um, far reaching program of state sponsored doping. Here's what they did first, they developed this cocktail of drugs to give to some of the Russian athletes. Uh, before giving them the drugs, they collected urine samples from the athletes for a time when they weren't using the drug cocktail. And they kept those urine samples because they knew they were clean and kept them and stored them. Then they figured out a way how to open up the, uh, the sample bottles that were going to be used at the Olympics without detection and at the 2014 Olympics, if one of their Russian athletes got selected for drug testing, they had developed this secret, um, this secret passageway that where they would, um, they could hand the um, their sample bottle, and then their technicians would swap the. Uh, new urine for the old urine. So the, the new urine would, would, would result in a positive test. The old urine was from a time when they were supposedly clean and um, they would swap that out. Also, what they did is if somehow their, their athletes tested positive, they would either um, not report to WADA the results of the test or report that they were in fact um, a negative test rather than a positive test. So this was all done at the state level uh, for the Russian athletes. So that's, in, so that's what Grigory Rodchenkov uh, reported to the, um, to, the, to the German documentary company. So the next thing that happened was um, WADA commission, once um, WADA had learned about it, they commissioned an investigation into these allegations, and the um, uh, Richard McLaren, it, uh, a noted sports law professor, uh, he was the head of the investigation, and the, the result of that is called the McLaren Report. Rodchenkov provided a copy of the data uh, indicating which athletes were provided the, the cocktail, which athletes uh, they had stored sample, which athletes they had switched out samples, and which athletes um, had uh, not reported the results of the test, and which athletes had um, uh, a false negative reported. So in December 2017, the IOC, based on the McLaren report, the IOC suspended the Russian Olympic Committee and um, but cleared a path for Russian athletes to compete at the 2018 Winter Olympics as neutral athletes and determined a pathway towards reinstatement. So that's in December of 2017. And in September of 2018, 
Lada ruled that Rusada could be reinstated if it could provide the authentic information management data system uh, rather than the copy that Rodchenkov had provided. That data is known as the LIMS data, and that's what's at issue here. So they, they wanted that original data about who was getting the swap samples, who was whose positive tests were not being reported, and whose positive tests were being reported as um, negative tests. Uh, Rusada, so they were supposed to supply that data by December 31 of 2018, and, and Rusada missed that, de that deadline. They didn't provide it. They provided it in January of 2019, and WADA reviewed the data and found that there were uh, significant deletions, there were alterations of data, and manipulations of data. And so in December 2019, WADA declared that Rusada was non-compliant with the World Anti-Doping Code uh, based on the provision of the manipulated data and sanctioned, sanctioned them, the number of sanctions, which I'll get to, for a four-year period, uh, sanctioned the whole Russian anti-doping agency. Rusada appealed that decision, the four-year sanction, to the Court for Arbitration of Sport, and that's what we have now, is the decision from the Court for Arbitration of Sport. They agreed, the Court for Arbitration of Sport agreed that WADA had proved that Rusada was non-compliant with the provision of data, that they had provided altered, manipulated, and tampered data. And uh, however, they reduced the sanction from four years to two years, but they are some, some of the biggest, I would argue the biggest sanctions ever. And here's what they are. First, it applies to the, the two-year period, and, it, and it's for, um, so Russian government officials may not be on any board or committee of any WADA signatory. That means any um, uh, international federation that's, part, that's a signatory to WADA. Second, Russian government officials may not attend, be accredited, or participate in any Olympics or world championships of any WADA signatory. Third, Russia may not host or bid to host any Olympics or world championships. Fourth, the Russian flag may not be flown or displayed at any Olympics or world championships. Fifth, Russian athletes and support personnel may not wear the Russian flag, emblem, or symbol on any uniform, clothes, or equipment. They have to wear a, a uniform provided by the, the host of the, the competition. And if it says Russia on it, it must also say neutral athlete um, in as big as letters as it says Russia. And if Russia wins in, uh, any medals, no national anthem. So no flag, no anthem, no symbol, no team uniform, um, all that. Uh, those are the non-monetary sanctions. There's also some huge monetary sanctions. Uh, so in order to be reinstated, Rusada would need to fulfill the following conditions. First, they need to pay WADA 1,270,000 US dollars for the cost of investigating the LIMS data. Second, Rusada, under the supervision of WADA, will need to investigate any cases stemming from the LIMS data and follow up with results management of any positive cases. Third, an inter international observer must remain on Rusada's board. Rusada needs to provide quarterly reports to WADA concerning the independence from the Russian government. WADA was very concerned that since this was a state-sponsored um, uh, doping scheme, that there need to be, Rusada needs to be independent from the Russian government. Um, fourth, Rusada must not interfere with the international investigations of Russian athletes. Rusada needs to be fully compliant during the two-year sanction period, and WADA needs to or Rusada needs to pay WADA for the cost of monitoring the compliance during the two-year period. So uh, an additional uh, fine they need to pay that they, they haven't specified how much that costs. 
And finally, or uh, next, Rosada needs to pay WADA 10% of its 2019 income or 100,000 US dollars, whichever is less. And Rosada needs to pay 80% of the costs of the arbitration that they just concluded with the Court for Arbitration of Sport. And Rosada needs to pay WADA 400,000 Swiss francs for their legal fees in the um, Court for Arbitration of Sport arbitration. So some huge sanctions. Uh, Rosada really needs to um, clean up their act and um, fulfill their obligations if they want to um, be a, a member of the international sporting community. So related to that is the, um, the other story, the second story that we have today, and that is about the International Testing Agency. What they are is a, they're an independent nonprofit organization based in Lausanne, Switzerland, that offers anti-doping programs to international federations and to national anti-doping organizations. So if so those entities they, they have obligations under the World Anti-Doping Code. If they don't want to fulfill them themselves with, the, with their own um, board members or or independent contractors or, or employees, if they don't want to do that themselves and want someone else to do it, they can hire the independent testing agency to do that. And they do things like the testing, they do science and research, they do managing of ath athlete biological passports, they do investigations, therapeutic use exemptions, uh, results management, um, compliance with WADA requirements, uh, education and they can do Adams management and they also train anti-doping officers um, so so the International Testing Agency announced that the IOC has tasked it to retest some of the samples from the 2014 Olympics in Sochi so this is not just the Russian athletes but this is um, uh, potentially any of the the uh, athletes that that had samples from Russia. The IOC has already concluded testing, uh, retesting samples from Beijing 2008 and from London 2012. So now they're retesting samples from 2014 Sochi. And the reason why is because that there's been advances in the drug testing meth technology. And so uh, now they're able to detect um, lower trace amounts of banned substances that they weren't able to detect uh, back, in the, back in the tests that were available in 2014. So uh, I would expect to see some positive tests coming back from the retested samples from Sochi 2014. Okay, the third story today is about a rugby player named Adam Carr. He is 20-year-old rugby, rugby player from the UK and he played for the Thado Heath Crusaders of the Rugby Football League in the UK. Uh, after the 2019 season, on the advice of his personal trainer, he began taking the fat-burning supplement Clonox 2. Uh, he was taking a couple tablets a day that he purchased from a friend, and he continued taking the Clonox until December. So from October to December, he was taking these Clonox 2 tablets. In December of 2019, Adam was offered a professional contract with the Rochdale Hornets, and they're a second tier professional league in the Rugby Football League in the UK. Just days after he signed his professional contract, he was selected for an out of competition test. And on his doping control form, he listed paracetamol as one of his, as the only uh, drug or supplement that he was taking. Uh, however, when he, his sample was tested positive for his out of competition sample was tested positive for clenbuterol. WADA considers clenbuterol to be an anabolic steroid and it's prohibited at all times by the World Anti-Doping Code. However, according to some other studies, it's more pro clenbuterol is more properly characterized as a beta-2 agonist. It does have some medical uses as a bronchodilator for asthma uh, sufferers to make breathing easier. 
It has the ability to increase uh, basal metabolism and exercise output, and celebrities have used it as a weight loss drug and bodybuilders use it during their cutting cycles. So that's, that's what clenbuterol is used for. The side effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, palpitations, tachycardia, and myocardial infarction. So it's a, a dangerous drug that has uh, some serious side effects if it's not used um, uh, without supervision. In February of 2020, the UK Anti-Doping issued a notice of charge for the presence of a prohibited substance uh, for Adam Carr in his out of competition sample. And the sanction that they listed on the notice of charge was the four year sanction for an intentional violation. In March of 2020, Adam Carr requested a hearing, which was heard by the UK anti-doping panel. And they held the first instance hearing, which found that Adam Carr had been, had committed an intentional violation and was subject to the four year ban. And he appealed that decision to the UK anti-doping appeal tribunal. So they had the first instance hearing and then the appeal hearing. His argument, that was that he didn't know he was required to disclose the, the Clenox that he, uh, that he was taking on the doping control form because he had thought he just had to, dis to disclose medications and not supplements, even though the doping control form tells you to, tells you to disclose all medications and supplements. Also, his argument was that um, he didn't, when he took the Clenox, he didn't know that it contained clenbuterol. And when he took Clenox, he was an amateur and didn't know that anti-doping rules applied to him. He thought they only, his argument was the, he thought they only applied to professional rugby players. And at the time when he was taking it, it was before he was offered his professional contract and he was just an amateur. Also, his argument was that he wasn't trying to improve his sporting performance with the use of Clenox or Clenbuterol. He was just trying to improve his body image. And finally, his argument was that he hadn't received anti-doping education um, prior to taking Clenox. And for these reasons, he argued that uh, he should have a two-year sanction for non-intentional violation rather than the four-year sanction for an intentional violation. So the UK Anti-Doping uh, Appeal Tribunal didn't agree with him. They, they found that the doping control form clearly stated you're supposed to take your med disclose your medications and your supplements, and Adam Carr didn't do that. Secondly, they rejected his argument that he, that Adam Carr didn't know that the anti-doping rules applied to him as an amateur. They found that he should have been aware that there was a significant risk of, um, that the anti-doping rules would apply to him and his, um, disregard of a significant risk that is enough to make an intentional violation. Uh, that's what they held, that intentional violation means that the athlete engaged in conduct that he knew that there was a significant risk that the conduct might constitute an anti-doping rule violation and disregarded the risk. So the UK anti-doping found that he had an intentional uh, violation and sanctioned him with four years. And that's it for anti-doping updates, episode number five. Uh, if you enjoyed this, tap the like button gently and subscribe to get more notifications. And I'll see you in the next issue.